Let's explore the different strategies to be able to keep the salesperson focused, engaged. In turn, you're going to reduce turnover, foster a really healthy culture, corporate culture. Um, so the key things to retain top talent mm -hmm. and incentivize. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our show at In The House Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Woon. And I'm your co-host, Tony Singh. Well, thanks for joining us this week. We are so excited to be able to share uh, our next topic with you, but I understand that you wanted to intercept and... Yeah, I want to do something fun. Okay. <laughs> and I want you to answer. We're going to play a game. I want you to answer the first thing that intuitively, intuitively comes to your mind, okay? The game is called Which Do You Prefer? Just so our listeners can get to know us a little bit better. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to give you two options. You just say which you prefer. Just repeat the one, okay? Got it. Got it. Okay. Which do you prefer? Sweet or savory? Sweet. Time alone in reflection or being a social butterfly? Ooh, time alone in reflection. Easy one. Okay. Self-development courses or spirituality courses? Ah, self-development courses. Okay. And but find, spirituality courses is super I know, close it's a close behind. second. That's yeah. why I put that there. I'm like, which one will she choose? Yeah. Final one, being a mentor or a mentee? Ooh, I, mean, that's a hard one. I love, yeah, both, both. But I think where I am now, mm -hmm. mentor, okay. being a mentor. I thought you would pick that one. But that's it for our quick game. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> uh, this week's topic is about designing a sales compensation package or sales commission package when you're hiring a sales associate on your team. And so uh, if you, the listener, are putting together a sales team, it could be looking like the way it's structured, structured is a sales coordinator plus a sales representative plus a sales manager mm -hmm. or uh, could be maybe a handful of um, sales managers and one coordinator. So there's so many different um, structures, mm -hmm. but when it comes to incentives and motivations, um, a sales department is extremely unique in a way where the compensation is directly reflected on the sales results. Yes. And so sales uh, commission or sales compensation you know, I don't know how, how far it goes back, but long time established strategy that when you're applying um, a commission based structure, it helps propel the salespeople. And so different frontline um, sales roles need commission plans that are extremely unique to their job duties mm -hmm. and the responsibilities. And so today we're going to cover um, how having a compensation strategy will help you retain um, all your salespeople. Yeah, retention is very important. So hiring talent and retaining that talent and building the proper team. Mm -hmm. When we're taking, when we're looking at all of these things together, a sales compensation plan can be developed with, with specific concepts and components in mind. Mm -hmm. What would some of these be? Mm, you have to really be, be able to identify duties and responsibilities of um, your certain role, and but also during that sales cycle. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's maybe at the very beginning, the administrative is that's really heavy, heavy on the preparation in, to ensure that when the sales uh, funnel is happening that um, the process is super strong and seamless mm -hmm. um, whereas on the back end the sales team may perhaps be just making up on calls and so they're not really on the sales floor yet really putting under that being under that pressure being on that spotlight mm -hmm. um, secondly is the type of sales engagements and how they're interacting with um, the clients, the, the buyers. And what I mean by that is, um, 
who are the stronger closers on yes. the sales floor? We're talking about talent there. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, seniority or experience is also hugely important. Mm -hmm. And that probably that could relate to their ability to close contracts as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that's important when looking at compensation plans. And then also... Um, different motivating factors that's true yeah because everybody's package or road to success looks very different and so what are, is that salesperson trying to get out of that experience um, are they just wanting to learn um, from a more experienced sales manager are they trying to um, hit a certain volume of deals are they trying to hit a certain um, GCI um, yeah, so it's mm -hmm. just, I think you really need to tap into that with really with a really open dialogue with your employees when you're in preparation of hiring them or in preparation of delivering the sales um, agreement with them. So what kinds of, if you wanted to find out somebody's motivations mm -hmm. so that you could best service the team and obviously hold them accountable to their goals, what, what kinds of questions would you ask um, or have you asked on the first interview? Mm. Uh, I would I would say I what a, where their short term and long term goals are mm -hmm. I think is is probably really tapping into what they want to gain out of the work experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good place to start as well. It also lets you know kind of um, what their expectations are in relation to those motivations, mm -hmm. like on you mm -hmm. as the sales director. Mm -hmm. So obviously, when the, it's properly designed and implemented. Um, this sales compensation can be very powerful in terms of helping you influence the overall sales and uh, of a project mm -hmm. um, and the results. Mm -hmm. It could definitely initiate like productivity, high performing behaviors. And so what we're going to do today is bef um, before we start looking at different compensation plans, the type of plans, um, here are some things that you need to consider when you're creating this this plan so um firstly mm -hmm. is looking at the compensation or commission plans that are in place with the competitors that are in the market as well. Uh, it'll set a really good benchmark within the industry peers. And so it's really imperative that the salesperson doesn't feel unvalued or otherwise they're going to quickly jump ship if they know that they're not getting compensated fairly. Of course. Yeah. Um, and obviously during the planning stage, the compensation has to be developed um, in concert with business plan, meeting budgets, target markets mm -hmm. um, and the rest of the team structure so I guess an important thing to consider is how much are the other salaries and commissions needing to be paid out right because it relates to the bottom line yes the budget yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but also like how many realtors are going to be involved in the interaction on the other end representing the the buyer Buyers. that's coming in so overall that will reflect if if it's going to be 100 percent representation then <clears throat> maybe you know the the numbers need to be adjusted in the yeah, performa for sure so um and that's typically the case is that 99% of the time the buyers come in with with um, agents. So, so um, yeah, let's explore the different strategies to be able to keep the salesperson focused, engaged. Um, in turn, you're going to reduce turnover, foster a really healthy culture, corporate culture. Um, so the key things to retain top talent mm -hmm. and incentivize um Otherwise, they're going to seek opportunities or simply feel super complacent in their in their work. So let's um, dive deep into these different strategies. Okay, go ahead. Number one, be transparent. We love that, don't we? Transparency is very important. It's key. <laughs> it's key. So it's absolutely vital that you're upfront uh, with your potential hire, and that could look like you know giving what you're sharing what your goals are for the company maybe for the project mm -hmm. uh perhaps for yourself and for the team members and an important thing about being transparent is letting that possible team member know if the contract is serving a specific time range mm -hmm. that 
that does make sense because if your project will only take two months or 60 days to sell versus two years to sell, mm -hmm. 24 months, um, the, the packaging compensation will be very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, secondly is commission split. So a really good rule of thumb to start is when you're always commission-based, you're going to assume you're going to make more than somebody who's working on an hourly wage. So um, the rule, good rule of thumb is that um, the baseline, the top total commission for a top performing salesperson person should be at the very least equal to the base salary. Mm -hmm. So um, start with that and then work from there where that um, budget will allow mm -hmm. for compensation. And I guess it, it, these kinds of things would be uh, it would depend on the scale of the project and how many how many people on the team you would need to service that project. Oh, absolutely. So one could have more experience yeah. than the other, um, but the other person also it has the same kind of equal um, title or responsibility, but the other one may have five years less experience. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that will definitely reflect in... Um, the split. In the splits. That's right. So number three, there's no one size that fits all. That just makes total sense. Uh, I've seen a lot of different pro. I mean, depending on the project, it's flexible in terms of that compensation structure, right? Um, it's going to depend on a number of things. So target markets within that market, um, the team size, like we kind of just spoke about, their experience, and does it require multiple language speaking sales reps in terms of like who the buyer is, what demographic is buying that type of product? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are you seeing right now on the projects that you're working on in Burnaby versus Vancouver? Are you specific like I remember there was a period of time where we would only hire uh, reps that spoke Mandarin Cantonese and English like all three well at least Mandarin and English and then okay. Cantonese and English depending on on where the project was right so what are you seeing right now in terms of your sales teams in Burnaby versus Vancouver hmm I would have to say that Mandarin and Cantonese is not a primary or essential it's mm -hmm. a great asset to have but it hasn't been really necessary um, for the most part I would say English is the first language in the sales center. I do have uh, an, uh, one of my team members, Dom. He's working on a project in Richmond. He does speak the Cantonese language and really is very patient with those mm -hmm. that demographic. And so I've put him into that sales site um, versus, you know, I had Sam and Andrew in North Burnaby, where um, they were, they they know the ins and outs of all the Burnaby buildings. Mm -hmm. um, they spoke their own languages. One, you know, Andrew speaks Vietnamese. Sam speaks a little bit of Cantonese mixed in with Mandarin. So, but not flu uh, fluently. Mm -hmm. However, I don't really think they actually needed those second languages. So, I just want to elaborate on that a bit more just for the listeners. Um, so does that mean, did you guys notice on your sales teams, because I, I know that um, in 2012, maybe to around 2016, it was an important skill because a lot of the buyers were, um, the English wasn't their first language. So did you notice that when they had changed the foreign buyer policy, that that was not uh, necessarily a requirement anymore? Because it would have been around, what was it, 2015, 2016 that, that they made those changes? I would say... I can't remember the exact year. <laughs> you know what? I, I think it really do, does affect the, the Richmond market yes. um, in the greater Vancouver area. But I honestly um, felt like I've been doing, doing projects and I haven't really picked up more um, Cantonese or more Mandarin. Lots of local people. Totally, and, and also mm -hmm. they're re being represented, right? And so so I haven't really had to apply the language. And in fact, I probably, my language skills have gotten worse. It's oh, really? reversed because when I did work in Richmond, I actually spoke a lot of Cantonese and, and now I barely even know how to order. You just said something interesting. That could be a factor as well. Uh, when they changed agency in British Columbia, 
mm-hmm. right? So most, I, I would imagine, so when I when we had started in project sales, it was more common for buyers to come in directly off of the street mm-hmm. and buy directly through the sales team. But the sales team, we represented the developer. We were never looking after, it wasn't our mandate to look after the best interests of the buyer, even though you still have to be transparent about certain information, right? And I think when they changed agency, I did see a, a shift as well in that because you're absolutely right you've got more buyers agents on the other end so yeah. it eliminates that language barrier right but it's a c- consideration which is why we have it in here mm-hmm. that yeah. makes sense yeah okay um Number and four. getting creative on the compensation package. So this is a fun one because it's not all about numbers. Sometimes some people, some em- employees are not driven by the, the dollar amount. Mm-hmm. And although you sometimes you come out of your graduation course and you're like oh yeah it's a very lucrative business and people make a lot of money but at the end of the day um that is a byproduct of of the results there are so many other ways to add certain perks or um provide a different type of package structure so i know you know working from home nowadays Mm -hmm. um that is an incentive for a lot of people I'm, yeah. I'm not, it's not specific person, to this, yeah. loca- this yeah, yeah, yeah. topic, but working from home and not having to go into the office, that way you, you reduce your costs on daycare, maybe you reduce your travel um, yes. travel expense mm-hmm. and uh, time. That's, that to me is a perk if you can stay at home. Sometimes it, you may not have the space <laughs> or the capacity or, the, or you get easily distracted, but some uh-huh. people it actually works for them. Yeah. Um, I know that there's some uh, departments, like the the fire department, for example, they're reduced, they're um, making shift work like 24 hours. So you're working, and that way you have, you're working for two days, and then you're actually off for like five days. I mean, I of, feel like they need that rest. Well, before it was four days on, four days off. Yeah. And so um, by restructuring it, they actually have more time to to spend with their family. Mm -hmm. So getting back to um, real estate, Mm -hmm. um, having bonus structures, um, maybe perks like box seats um, Mm -hmm. to the hockey season. They used to do that sometimes when I worked at Rennie. Right. And mm-hmm. so um, extended health benefits, which is something that I really, uh, really enjoyed using when I worked for corporate um, mm-hmm. real estate, uh, summer team events, Christmas events, um, extra days off, um, lunch and learn events where you're maybe paying for the education course. I have, um, remember we had a guest or maybe you weren't on at that time, was Michelle, I who was my, labor? yes, <laughs> you were. And so um, Michelle, who's my, my mentor, my coach. Yes, I missed that one in person. So yeah, she's been, I had coffee with her and mm-hmm. she just mentioned um, her son is working for a startup company called Perk Up. And okay. so this app allows employers to um, provide other offerings uh, in a way to compensate their employees in a different way other than monetary. That's so, so cool. So rather than um, paying a, paying more money to a raise, mm-hmm. they're uh, providing more maybe lifestyle allowances. Maybe, you know, they're, you're mm-hmm. giving them $50 to enhance their life in, in another way or wellness mm-hmm. um, maybe you're providing daycare services for their kids maybe you're empowering their employees to take uh, to get access to better edu- more education but um, but I'm actually looking into into that because I don't provide um, extended health benefits to my my team right now yeah. so this is a great way to be able to just uh, thank them in, in and, and other you ways. appreciate them yeah yeah it's a good way to show it yeah um, tip number five mm-hmm. is pay on time I mean money makes the world go round right <laughs> and people <laughs> use money to survive so it's really important um, in real estate and every industry pay on time my motto is kind of like pay well for talent and pay on time um, it can be very motivating. And you can imagine if you are not paid on time, how deflating that could be. Um, stagnant energy It's just not a good way to build business relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I want to add another one, actually, sure. is exploring um, opportunities and growth in their role. 
So yeah, it's important. Sometimes when we mentioned that they may feel complacent after a while, what is it that they want to achieve? So when you're hiring them, you ask for their short-term and long-term goals, but at the end of the day, like, are you able to position them so that their strengths are being utilized to mm -hmm. its optimum? And um, yeah, by being able to, to evaluate their behavior on a weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis, um, creating these this package with these things in mind, um, you're able to make adjustments tactical, tactically mm -hmm. throughout the year and um, retain your staff for the long yeah, term. Yeah, it's very important. I'm glad that you added that one in. That's it, guys. I want to just uh, say that um, there's no there's no rule of thumb. There's no um, like we mentioned before, there's no one size fits all. Every developer does have a different structure. So I know one builder, they pay a base salary and then um, and they have commission based. And typically, typically most teams are like this. When one deal's written, regardless of who's writing the deal, everybody they split splits in a pot. that, mm -hmm. right? So and everybody has their own contracts. You don't know what one sales manager is getting um, versus another sales manager. So there is no one size fits all contract. Um, I would have to say that know what your know your worth. Mm -hmm. um, know what type of values you're offering to the employee before you're hiring them and, and why they should um, stay with your company. For sure. I think that we should end it there because those are some great tips and an excellent summary on this topic on designing your sales commission package when hiring sales associates. And if you guys have any other uh, tips and advice or have any questions about this topic, we'd love to hear from you. Be sure to share this information. Mm -hmm. um, like, give us a subscribe, review. give us a review, reach out if you think we need to add anything in or if you have questions. And we're at In The House Podcast. We're in the podcast.com on our mm -hmm. website. Um, you can find us on many platforms such as Amazon, such as Spotify, IGTV, and uh, Apple Podcast. Yep. I mean, we're out there. Everything's on social. <laughs> Put it out there. Thanks, guys.